Play Burst Crawlers here. Spiking bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Rob Bear with you again today, checking out yet another Death Guard new <laughs> release. Like I said, I can't remember a time when Death Guard wasn't coming out. And we still got a little bit more to go, but hey, we got a tank. Here it is right here. Pretty dope little configuration. Now, this is a 71 component kit for $65. Got a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of detail on this thing, but there is about zero options for it to actually convert it into a different kit. It is one kit with two different weapon options for the sponsored mounts, and that is it, believe it or not. But like I said, incredibly well detailed. A lot of work went into creating this kit, and it will take a little while to put together. There you can see the entropy cannon or the plague spitter itself right there. But yeah, like I said, not a whole lot going on for interchangeability with this thing here so it's going to be two different sprues we've seen that in the past and of course an instruction manual let's get in there and take a closer look at this bad boy now i definitely was having some flashbacks to the old way alima russes went together with the interior kind of wheels and then you would assemble some treads around it as i was looking in here of course we didn't have these crazy computer slices like we do now with these left and right parts and i don't even know what this mortar kind of support thing right up here but we definitely had stuff like this like i said with the old lehman russ where you would put the wheels on and then there would be tread sections and those would all get glued on and then you'd have to put another left and right hatch or left and right half on over top of it and you almost have like a track guard kind of piece right here which is really interesting to see uh, then you can do the heavy slugger or the rot hail volley gun on the front right there and then of course you just build up the plague mortar which seems to be pretty well detailed it's got a couple different wheel options right there and then your left and right sponson weapons, whether you want the entropy cannon or the plague spitter. Front, cow dozer blade thing, whatever you want to call it. And then you just kind of slot it down into the middle there with a the mortar, and that's pretty much it. Very simple kit, believe it or not, but it will take you a little bit of time to cut out all these pieces. Let's not talk about the rules quite yet let's take a closer look at the miniature itself or the pieces rather wish i had time to put these together so many releases this week so as you can see tons of detail here you got some extreme pitting some extreme poxes some crazy metal stressing right here that goes deep there's actually some deep cuts right there great riveting so you got some chain mail you got some actual chain itself more uh, what looks to be riveting or excuse me pox there's like some poxes some scoring all sorts of gear heads and things like that so incredibly well detailed this front top piece right here which is basically like a track guard very well detailed as well nice crisp edges but it looks like there's some metal stressing and some tearing almost some shearing on it right there more and more pox marks and pitting more riveting and such all over the kit. I guess when you have more surface area, you have more opportunity to fill it in with cool effects and they definitely did not waste or squander that opportunity with this kit whatsoever. Going over to the tread section, I don't even know what all these things do here. You've got crazy tubers, you've got crazy piping, you've got what looks to be coils, more crazy piping, some sort of like accelerator ring thing i don't even know what that is then all sorts of wheels and then you've got your weapon mounts for the sponson depending on what ends you want to put on them it'll look dope now check out the imprint in the tread here you've got some crazy looking like i don't know what is that teeth like some crazy teeth in here awesome riveting on all of the chassis or the fuselage itself just great looking detail here like through and through can't be mad about any of that again some stuff we've definitely started seeing a lot more of with some of the nurgle kits but it's good to see that it's carried over here to this kit with a lot more surface area you know to kind of showcase and 
fill up with detail, I guess, so to speak. Now, rules-wise, we talked about this in the last video with the Foted Bloat drone. But overall, I think it's 149 points for this bad boy. Let's see. Heavy support. Play Burst Crawler is 140 points. And then depending on what you equip it with from uh, the Plague Spitters, I believe are 17 points right there. Is that two? Both its Plague Spitters. So that's interesting. It comes with two. So you're looking at 17 points. For a plague spitter, yep, times two. Again, I think plague spitter is a well-rounded weapon with uh, assault D6, great neck one, great one damage. It's a little short on range. I'm not sure you would want to even take it if you didn't have to take it on this weapon because it is inherently an indirect weapon that you're going to be using it for self-defense. But it is what it is. It's going to make this plague burst crawler easily another 34 points so you're talking 174 on the day for the plague burst crawler but it is extremely resilient with eight toughness and 12 wounds some attacks in close combat nothing to write home about but it does have disgustingly resilient so it is going to maybe perhaps you know negate some damage it does take and gets through and it does explode on a 5-up, that great D3 mortal wound. Goodness, and remember there is a stratagem that auto-detonates you for one command point. So if they do take it down and you want to cause some final damage on whatever may have gotten to it, well, one command point, you're going to cause D3 wounds right there. Ballistic skill 4 at strength 7 attacking in close combat there. It's movement is a 9-inch range, which is typically reserved for, you know... Um, Decent sized stuff. I didn't exactly expect that from the blight haulers are 10. Wow, that's crazy. Huh. That's got a little juice on it. That's good to see. I like it. I can't I can't hate on that. So there you go. But like I said, is it necessary to take in a competitive build? No. Is it cool to take because it's just a neat tank? Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's got some great detail work. You can have some definitely jam out on some hobby love with this thing. But that being said, you're not going to have a whole lot of options with it. So I'm kind of disappointed it wasn't a dual kit personally with um, the uh, Mythic uh, Blight Hauler thingamabobber. But, you know, overall, it's a great new kit. It's cool to see stuff like this coming out for factions and definitely leaves me hopeful that perhaps, you know, when we start seeing some maybe some more T-Suns, if they decide to give you some more T-Sun kits, with the release of their codex. Well, I suppose uh, that remains to be seen, but there is definitely potential out there for more and more kits as we move forward into the depths or the bowels of 8th edition's release here in 2017. So that's it for this one. That's about all I can say about it. It's only one kit. <laughs> I could talk your ear off for another you know, five to ten minutes, but why? <laughs> we got a lot more stuff to talk about, so check out all the other unboxing videos for this week's wave of Death Guard releases. Make sure you subscribe to us and turn on notifications so you can be the very first to like and comment on our post. And of course, head on over to thelongboard.net, the home of the 8th edition battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the Long War today.